Number five of the condition by the Uganda Communications Commission states that the licensee shall from time to time allocate time to promote government programs. However, some of the broadcasters argue that they have been offering more than the one hour that the government is demanding for. While some of the media experts also say that government is overstepping its mandate. For the editorial airtime, then you set the agenda because you, you determine the topics and you invite us. You could, by the way, invite us alongside other people and we debate. But for this one hour, it is supposed to be for government to educate people about its various programs. How many government websites are up to date? How many people have stopped the government from updating their own websites, for instance? How many people go out there looking for information about uh, what's going on in government circles and they can't find it because that information isn't there? Instead of using opportunities that they have before them, they are instead trying to grab more before they can even utilize the little that they have. I just think this is actually greed. It is, it is fascinating. It is it's unacceptable. The following are some of the guidelines on the provision of free broadcast airtime. The allocated free airtime should be during prime time broadcast hours when listenership is high, which is 6 a.m. and 10 a.m., 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. The stations will be required to promote the designated programs in terms of jingles, presenter mentions, three days before the day. Responsible government officials who won't turn up for the program will be penalized for negligence of duty. The line ministries and departments will arrange appropriate well-informed political leaders and relevant officials to feature in the programs. For radio, the first 40 minutes of prime time should be allocated to government officials by program moderators and the last 20 minutes for feedback. While on television, feedback should be allocated 30 minutes. We think that for a start, uh, surely that's not asking for too much. Since the liberalization of airwaves in 1991, Uganda Communications Commission has since licensed over 200 radio stations and about 40 television stations. However, the government has a major stake in the national broadcaster Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, which covers the entire country. Most of the programs aired on the national broadcaster are largely skewed towards government. I asked Watasa why government does not utilize the airtime on UBC so that it can leave the unfettered private media to thrive. You find that listenership is actually fragmented, which is why we are saying we want to use as many platforms as much as possible, including the national broadcaster. That. But if you're going to give them 45 minutes to come and talk about non-existent uh, you know, service delivery and all that, I don't know. I don't know that that is going to serve really ultimately their own interests. In any case, how sure are they that the public is going to be listening to them? Some commentators fear that these new guidelines are employed by the government to use private media to rally support for the regime of professionals ahead of the, the hands 2016 polls. Uh, no, there, there's nothing like that. According to the sources in government, the president is expected to put the new stringent guidelines in motion by appearing on a private media of his choice to speak to the audiences. TV. Turning on your world. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV.